Welcome back for some more examples of simplifying perfect nth roots containing variables. As mentioned in the previous video, it's extremely important that we pay close attention to the index of the radical. So for this first example, we have a cube root, so the index is three. For the second example, we have a square root, so the index is two. And for the third example, we have a fifth root, so the index is five. The reason the index is so important is a radical reverses the operation of raising an expression or a number to a power. So to simplify the cube root of z the ninth, we're looking for an expression raised to the third power that would be equal to z to the ninth. And if we can think of that in our minds, that's great, but it's also helpful to have a process to simplify radicals. So because we have a cube root, our goal is to find all of the perfect cube factors of z to the ninth, and a perfect cube would have three equal factors. So z to the ninth is going to have perfect cube factors if it contains factors of z to the third. And it contains three factors of z to the third, so we're gonna write z to the ninth as z to the third times c to the third times z to the third. So because our index is three, every time we have three equal factors, this will simplify to just one of the factors. So this is a perfect cube factor so is this, and so is this. So every group of three equal factors will simplify to one factor of z. So this simplifies to z times z times z, which is z to the third. So the cube root of z to the ninth is z to the third. And again, the reason why it's z to the third is if we take this simplified expression, z to the third, and raise it to the power of the index, which is three, this does equal z to the ninth, our radicand, or the expression underneath the radical. So for the square root of m to the sixth, because the index is two, we want to find all the perfect square factors of m to the sixth. Well, every time we have two equal factors, we have a perfect square factor. We can write m to the sixth as m to the second times m to the second times m to the second. Of course, if we wanted to, we could write out six factors of m and then just circle every two factors. But this is a little bit less work. Here's a perfect square factor, here's a perfect square factor, and here's a perfect square factor. So this simplifies to one, two, three factors of m, or m to the third. Now, unless we're told that m is positive, when the index is even, and the simplified expression has an odd exponent, and three is odd, we do need an absolute value around this. The reason for that is, we can only take the square root of a positive number, so the radicand has to be positive, and the principal square root also has to be positive. Well, notice here, if m was negative, the radicand would be positive, which is fine, but if m was negative without the absolute value here, the result would be negative, which is not possible. So again, if the index is even and the exponent is odd, we need an absolute value unless we're told the variable is always greater than zero. And for our last example, we have negative the fifth root of n to the tenth, and because the index is five, this simplifies every time we have five equal factors of n. So we can write this as negative the square root of, well, n to the tenth is equal to n to the fifth times n to the fifth, and again, I wrote this as n to the fifth because the index was five, which means this will simplify to one factor of n, and so will this. So this simplifies to negative, or the opposite of n times n, which is negative n squared. And whenever the index is odd, we never have to worry about an absolute value. I do want to mention one more thing. If you've already learned how to convert a radical to a rational exponent, by this definition here, it does simplify this process as long as you know that the radicand is a perfect nth root. What I mean by that, if we take a look at this first example again, I could write this as z raised to the power of nine divided by three. Well, of course, nine divided by three is just three, which is obviously a much shorter way to simplify this but it only works when, number one, you've already been taught how to do this, and number two, only when this is a perfect nth root, meaning it simplifies perfectly. Looking at the second example, we could have written this as m 
raised to the power of 6 divided by 2, which would have just given us m to the third very quickly. Of course, we'd also have to include the absolute value, though. And then for this last example, the other option would have been negative n raised to the power of 10 divided by 5, which would have given us negative n squared. But I do want to add a caution here. If you haven't learned how to do this yet, please don't use it. And number two, it only works if we have perfect nth roots, meaning it simplifies perfectly, which we'll find very shortly is not always the case. Okay, I hope this was helpful.